Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope you're having a fabulous day and I hope you're ready to make snarks, snarks like shacks. <laughs> I meant to say, I hope that you're ready to make sharks like snacks collage. Oh boy, I didn't think that was a tongue twister, but apparently it was. Why don't we start with our art class catchphrase and get things started? Maybe that'll help. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Big shout out to our sponsors, which are Ticonderoga and Art to Remember. I'll be using quite a bit of Ticonderoga art supplies today. I'm using their Pagan Mixed Media Paper, my favorite. It's thick like sketchbook paper, but it's not just for drawing, it's mixed media. Just like we talk about during the art class, that means you can mix up and use all of your art supplies on this paper and it's gonna hold and support all of your masterpieces. So thank you Ticonderoga for making fabulous art supplies for me to use. And thanks to Art to Remember. We want to remember and cherish everything we create and what better way to do that than with Art to Remember. Just take a picture on your phone, upload it to their website where you can create your very own online art gallery. I know, how amazing. And then have your artwork printed and reproduced on tons of different things. So be sure to check out their website. That's Art to Remember. Okay, let's talk about what we're making today. I have one right here. Let's see if I can say it again. Sharks like snacks. And that wasn't so hard. I don't know why I struggled with it a moment ago. So we're gonna be making a shark with a pop-out mouth with some snacks inside of his mouth. You're going to need two pieces of paper, one for the background, one for the pop-out, I'm also using crayons and markers, scissors and glue. You can use whatever you want to color with. You could also use whatever you want to glue with. Tape works great, glue sticks perfect, I'll be using glue. Before we get started, let's talk about those elements of art that we will be using for this. We've got line, shape, color, baby, color, form, value, texture, and space. Pinkies out, people. Ahem. <clears throat> I pinky promise that I will do my best. I will finish when I start, and I will keep a positive attitude. Mwah. All right, grab your paper, pencil, marker, whatever you want to draw with, and let's get started. To create our pop-out shark, we're going to first need to make the background paper. You'll need two pieces of paper. There's one piece for the background and one piece for the pop-out. Let's go ahead and begin with this background and for that we're going to start by drawing the shark first. To begin drawing the shark, find the side of your paper. Now find the middle side of your paper. Now I want you to put your finger at the bottom and find the line segment where it is in the middle of the middle and the bottom. So my two fingers are traveling together at the same speed. And there we go, I just found a quarter of my paper, kind of, kind of. All right, I'm gonna do that again on the other side. Actually, what I think I'll do is just put my finger here on this dot, go straight across to the other side, and put a little dot there. What I just decided was, how high I want to show my shark on the sides. Now I need to decide where his nose will come up on my paper. So I could make my finger go up and then come back down at an angle. This might be a little bit too small. This would be nice and tall, but I do want to leave a little space for my water. So practice with your finger a couple of times going up, like a letter A that's been stretched out and then coming back down. Or you could do what I'm about to do, find the middle top of your paper and then pull your finger down a little bit where you think that that will give you enough room for water and maybe some fish. So this looks like a good spot for me. I'm gonna put a tiny little guide dot right there. Now I'm going to connect the dots. 
So I'll start here. I'll go up and then curve and then come back down. So up, curve, come back down. I like to practice a couple of times with my finger. So I'm gonna go up with a kind of a sloped line, a kind of a curved line. It's not a perfect diagonal. I bent the line a little bit to come around and now I'm gonna keep my eye on this dot. I'm going all the way down to there. Great, it's a little wonky, but you know what? So am I, so that's perfect. Now I need to add the eyes. I know that a shark has eyes on the side of its head. So I'm thinking for a good place for an eye and I think I'll start with this one. When I draw this eye, I'm going to draw a circle that's pretty big, like this. And then I'm going to add another circle for the highlight inside, like that. Now you might notice I have a line going right through my eye. That's not a problem because I'm going to fill it in. That will hide or camouflage that little line. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but I want it to be in the same place. So notice how I pulled my finger over there. I'm gonna draw a nice size circle about the same size as this one. I'll add the highlight. I'll try to get it in the same place. And color, looks like this eye might end up being a little bit bigger than the other one, and that's okay. Now, I could always fix it by making this one a little bit bigger, I suppose, or I could just leave it. Now I'm gonna add his nostrils. He's looking up, we're looking at him below, so we can see his mouth, his eyes, and his nostrils. So I'll add a little bit, couple of ovals there and there. Easy, right? Okay, next up, let's add some waves near the top. He's swimming near the top of the water. So for that, I'm just going to use a curved line. It's almost like a letter U. You could do a loop-de-loop. -loop. I like to do that just for some variety, just to make things a little bit more interesting. Instead of just doing wave lines, I sometimes throw a loop-de-loop -loop in there. If you know a different way to make waves, I say go for it. Now I wanna sprinkle some fish throughout here and I really wanna show scale. I want my shark to look huge and one way to do that is by having him fill the majority of the paper like we did and have him contrast the fish who are gonna be really small. I'm gonna start by drawing the eye of my fish. Maybe add a little highlight just like I did the shark. I could draw a circle that hugs that first one. Ooh, he's dangerously close to my shark. I'm gonna put a rainbow over the eye, a rainbow arch line. Give him a little mouth. Oh, so cute with that big eye and that little mouth. When you contrast things, it makes your artwork really interesting. I'll do a reverse curve. And now I think I'll just do a bump, 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 bump for my tail, and maybe one at the top, bump, 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 for the fin. If there's any other details you wanna add, maybe the gill, go for it. If there's other ways that you like to draw your fish, I say do it. If there's other sea creatures that you wanna add, hey man, I'm not gonna stop you. I'll say go for it. Couple little bubbles just to show that he's blub, blub, blubbing along, okay. I think I'll add maybe another fish here, changing it up a little bit, maybe a circle. This time I didn't have enough room for the highlight. I added another circle that hugged it, a little arch like a rainbow. There we go, piece of cake, so super easy. Now, if you're wondering, how come your fish only has one eye? That's because we're looking at our fish from the side view, that's called the profile. Why don't we add a couple of more fish on the other side. They could also be swimming in the same direction or we could kind of have them looking at each other like how I have here. So I think I'll start by adding an eye. Circle that hugs it. If I'm going too fast, just press the pause button. Rainbow arch. Looks like a letter V that tipped over. Curve at the bottom and a tail, there we go. Ooh, this guy's a little bit bigger. 
And the papa fish is like, let's get out of here. What are we even doing? And if you have any more room, I say add them, but you know what? I think I'm happy with three fish and a shark. Next up, I'm going to color. I'll be using crayons to color. I'm gonna use, oh, I don't see a gray. I'll have to have a, a gray, I think, for my fish. I'm gonna use a blue for my sky. I like to lay out all of my colors before I start coloring. And maybe a nice bright orange that will really contrast that water for my fish. All right, I've got all of my colors ready. When I'm coloring my shark, I really want to show a dark value. So I'm pressing nice and hard around the edges and that creates a nice dark gray or a dark value. Usually when I see pictures of sharks, it looks like they are gray in color, but their underbelly is kind of like a white, almost looks kind of soft. I wonder if they're ticklish. So I'm just going to now, as I get closer toward the middle, get lighter and lighter as I color. If you're wondering, how is she getting that crayon to be so dark and then so light? It's all about the pressure that you add. Right now, I'm coloring very lightly. It's like I'm tickling my shark's underbelly, but when I want it to be darker, I press quite a bit harder. So for example, around these edges, I'm pressing really hard. I also slowed my speed down because I'm trying to stay within my lines. I don't want to get out of my lines. So I'm slowing my speed down. And then as I get closer towards the middle, I can go a little bit faster and I can also use less pressure. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and work on coloring in my shark my fish, my water, and my sky with crayons now. You can color with whatever you like, color pencils, markers, crayons, or use all of those art supplies and create what's called a mixed media work of art. Okay, now that I have this finished, I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way because now I'm ready to work on my pop out. So grab a new sheet of paper. I've got mine right here and I don't want to damage this or ruin it. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And with this piece of paper, let's go ahead and fold it in half because we're only going to be using half of this piece of paper. So I had it going horizontally. I brought the left side over to the right side, holding it still with one hand and now smooth out that bump. There we go. Now that that's all smoothed out, I'm gonna open this up and I see that there's a crease right here on my paper. I'm gonna use my scissors and cut that in half. One half of this paper we'll be using for the mouth. The other half you can save for another project. Okay, now that I have this finished, I'm gonna go ahead and work on creating this pop-out. So we're gonna do some more paper folding. To do that, have your paper going vertically, that means up and down. I'm going to bring the bottom of my paper to the top. I'm going to press down this bump. I'm going to bring the top of this paper to the bottom fold bringing this down just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to draw, but it's important that I understand where I'm going to stop drawing. So with my pencil, I'm just gonna draw a little line right here. So inside of this space here is where my snacks will go. Inside of these two middle rectangles, when it's closed, however, all you will see are the teeth. That little line lets me know where my snacks will go. Okay, let's work on that mouth. I'm gonna be drawing with a marker. You could draw with whatever you like. The first thing I'm going to do is just draw a rounded edge rectangle that hugs the outside rectangle. You're thinking, what? I'll show you. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm drawing a line that's very close to the top of my paper. And now when I get here, I'm gonna just turn a corner 
keeping my paper folded, I'm not opening it, pop over and then turn that corner. I think I'll start up here, round that edge. I'm just drawing a rectangle that's very close to the shape of my rectangle. There we go, there is my shark's mouth. Now I'm gonna add some teeth. Let's see, their teeth actually have rows and rows of teeth that go back. Their teeth break pretty easily, so that's why they have so many rows. I'm going to be drawing some very big teeth, maybe with a scratchy little line at the bottom to show that some of the teeth are broken. I like to kind of curve them over on the side. Notice I'm using a big letter V that's kind of like a curved shape. Nice and big. If you want it to be a chip tooth, there we go. Ooh, it's so scary. I would not want to see these teeth coming towards me. I'm gonna try to squeeze one in there. It's okay, they don't all have to be straight or going the right way. I'm pretty sure sharks don't have braces, so if they have crooked teeth, it's okay. I'm gonna add maybe a little tooth there and then a big one here. You could even have a little space where it's missing a tooth. I wonder if they have tooth fairies, you think? Oh, this is looking so scary. Notice how I made them really big because I'm trying to show the scale, how large those teeth are. Awesome, now that my teeth are finished, I'm gonna open this up and let's draw some snacks. I'm gonna show you how to draw these kind of snacks. You could draw anything you wanted to. Tacos, pretzels, ice cream, your favorite foods, whatever you can imagine. So you can draw along with me, or you could come up with your own idea. Let's see if I can get this guy to hold still for me. There we go. I'm gonna start with my cupcake. I think I'll start with a circle at the top. Nice and big. Maybe a little stem for the cherry. Whoop. I'm gonna have a rainbow that hops over that cherry. Now this could be easily become an ice cream cone if you wanted to. Could easily become the top of a hamburger too. So get really creative. This is your shark having snacks. You get to decide what you want to draw, what you want to create. I'm just here to give you some ideas. That don't mean you gotta use them. There's my icing. I'm gonna draw a couple of lines for the side. I don't know what's happening here. I got a little bit of bloop with my icing over there. I'm gonna make the bottom of the cupcake not straight but rounded to show that it's not a flat shape but it's a fat form. It's popping out into space. Maybe I'll show some implied texture, kind of like I did with these jaggedy edges of the teeth. There we go. Ooh la la, that's a delicious cupcake. Let's see, what else could he use? Well, I'm gonna draw a hamburger, and look, it starts very similar to the cupcake. I'm gonna look for some space. It looks like I have some space here. I'm gonna start with my olive, which is kind of like an oval shape. A little bit of red right there. I think that's a pepper. There's my stick coming out, my little toothpick, and the bun, making a nice big curve. Oops, I wanna show that it's going into it. There we go, so I did a little bit of overlapping. <laughs> Looks like my stick got a little bit bent. He got really excited and bent the toothpick. Guess he's not gonna be using it to clean out his teeth. Add some sesame seeds, which are not the same as the sprinkles that we have over here. Now let's see, I think I'll add a wavy line for some lettuce. This is where you can think about what you like on hamburger, your black bean burger, maybe you're a, a fish sandwich kind of person, although if you're a shark, I guess they would like a fish sandwich, wouldn't they? I'm gonna add maybe my hamburger patty there. Ooh, it looks almost like a face, doesn't it? Ooh, that hamburger is not looking very happy. Maybe some cheese, tomatoes, and let's see, maybe some more toppings before you add the bun. What else could you add? I think after a meal like this, you might need some breath mints. Maybe a circle. Again, if I'm going too fast, just press the pause button. I'm doing this very similar to the fish. 
I didn't want my shark to eat any of my cute little fish, so that's why I decided to go with some snacks. But, like I said, you're the artist. You could make a couple of different sharks and draw different things inside of its mouth. If you're making this for somebody else, maybe for Father's Day that's coming up soon, or perhaps even a birthday card, you could write happy birthday or a special message inside. All right, now that I'm almost finished, I'm drawing a couple of cookies now that are overlapping. Now I'm going to color. And again, when I color, I'll be using my crayon. Okay, I still have a little bit of coloring to do, but you know what? I'm too excited to finish right now. I think I'm ready to go ahead and add this to my shark. So, I've got my shark here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and turn it over. The only place I will be adding glue is once it's closed is to this back part. So I've got it closed. The only place I'm adding glue is right here in the back. Come on, glue. And I'm just making a line of glue around the edges. There we go. Now I have to decide where this mouth will go. Kind of close to the bottom, under the eyes. I'm trying to center it and hold it in place. Now you'll notice on this one, I did spend a little bit more time coloring it in. I can always go back and do that. I just got so excited to see how that would look. And I love it, it looks awesome. I hope you had so much fun making your sharks eating snacks drawing. And if you did, make sure you give this video a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks for joining me guys.